Welcome back my fellow duplicants. Today we're going to be looking at steel manufacturing in an automated way. So down here I was able to produce enough steel to kind of build a couple pieces of equipment. And I was able to do that because the pool down here was just cool enough to where I could run it into the metal refiner and then have it dump out into the same puddle over and over again. However, this puddle is starting to heat up so that's really not going to work anymore. What I'd really like to build down here is an automated metal refinery system that kind of lives within this biome. So aesthetically and logistically, all of the metal refinery should be happening over here, operated by a dupe. My thought is that basically I'll have an automated inventory system so that we always have a certain amount of refined metals on hand. And maybe a duplicate down here can actually do the delivery run if you need to build something all the way over there. I don't know, that's the idea. I don't know how achievable that is. Definitely not going to happen all today, but I can at least get some of these metal refineries up. Uh, I can get them built and hooked up to a steam turbine so that we can actually generate its own power from the refining process. Not only that, we have this natural gas generator down here that we can tap into. So that thing should definitely be more than self-powering. It actually should be able to supply some power if we wanted it to to the base over here. Okay, so one good thing that came out of this is that I have so much liquid down here that I actually ran into this area that I cooled it down a ton. So uh, I'm bringing all of that cold water that's at like zero degrees Celsius and I'm just going to bring it right back into my loop over here. So that should actually provide a decent, uh, decent boost to the cooling capacity that I'm running through my base. You might actually see the temperature come down inside of here. One bonus is that I put a ton of water over here. Actually, I've ended up filling that thing up. So I'm able to unload some of that water over here because I just don't need that much. I don't need to have this tank be full. It just has to be barely full. So I'm bringing this water back at about zero degrees Celsius and I'm just running it through my base. So that should really cool down the base over here. We should see that the temperatures, yeah, in this area should drop a little bit. You can see in this spot down here, we're down to about 20 degrees Celsius. So we're, we're getting back towards a, a normal number. So while the dupes did a lot of work up here and it was kind of, a, kind of ridiculous, it was actually useful. There you go, dupes, get to work. Be careful though, don't cook yourself. Oops, we gotta cook dupe. Ah, see, there we go. It's, Micron's just getting a little toasty, but not too toasty. All right, so looking back at my metal refining and what I want to do there, what I really want to have is an automated system like this. So this is actually based off of uh, a previous setup. I actually did a whole video on automating your inventory and in my last base, I did this system where I use a metal refinery and then some automation to um, determine how much is in each one of these storage bins so that you can always have a certain amount on hand. So that arrangement works out really, really good. It was one of the best things I've I've built in that base. So I'd like to recreate that here, but the one change I would have liked to have made la that last time is that all of the liquid loops that were running through the metal refinery were all connected together, which didn't allow them to run quite as fast as they possibly could. So when I do the steam turbine thing, that's going to you know, actually take the thermal energy out of the metal refining process. I want that to have several separate loops so that I can run multiple of them um, at the same time. So let me just rough in a little bit of stuff down here and let's see what happens. Ren, Ren, you don't need to build this. You, there's other things to do, priority level ones. You can, <laughs> I'm just trying to plan. I'm just trying to plan. Please don't cook yourselves while I'm not looking. That would be nice. All right, so if we build this a little bit bigger, right? All right, so if I build that just a little bit bigger, then I can have a couple of loops inside of there. And the other thing that is that I would like to have a way to keep this steam turbine cool all by itself. And I don't really want to use up a ton of power to do, to do that. So, all right, so my goal here is to have this be relatively nice and big. And I want uh, to have a way to cool this steam turbine all by itself. So there's a couple of pieces of equipment I can use to do that. I can either use an aqua tuner, which would be an efficient way to cool, cool itself down using liquid, but it would require 1,200 watts, which kind of gets me into more equipment. If I use a thermal regulator, it's not as efficient, but it's only 240 watts. And here's a key thing. It's only 200 steel, which is what I currently have. I don't have a lot of, I only have 1,200 steel at the moment, which I guess is enough for a thermal aqua tuner if I wanted to do it. Hmm. Okay. Run, be careful. There's gonna be a lot of freshly cooked dupes over here. 
Here, we can enable this and we can actually cool things down just a little bit, right? So you can see here that the germs are just being absolutely obliterated by the cold temperature, so... Uh, I, I'm killing them one way or another. Ultimately, I don't want this to run at like zero degrees Celsius. Well, I'd rather it run more towards 20. Sorry, I'm, I'm just gonna keep looking over here all this time. It's gonna be very hard to keep this video on track. Okay, so one of the things that I need to do here is I obviously need to check the temperature. So let's go ahead and just throw that over there so I don't have to have it in one spot. There we go. Gold, iron, aluminum. Okay, so there's the current idea. Essentially what I have here is the thermal aqua tuner keeps the steam turbine nice and cool. Uh, and then I have several heat exchangers right here that are just able to run uh, multiple metal refineries down below. So I could have like copper, gold, iron, steel, and then aluminum down there. And then maybe I flip one of those out because we don't use copper or something. And it looks like we have just enough room if I wanted to do a second steam turbine up there, I could do that. It would not be too hard to expand this unit and just cool both of them. There were several situations where I was able to run one steam turbine completely. So I think I might go ahead and do that actually. Although this map doesn't seem to have that many resources compared to the others. So that may not happen that much. And I also don't have the materials for a second steam turbine. So, okay. So maybe before I get super ambitious with it, <clears throat> scale it back to something reasonable so I can actually build it. Nice. So I can copy that and then I could just build it using the blueprint stuff. Although I don't quite have the materials I need. I need a little bit more aluminum. I should be recovering some materials over here and there's also some more I need to dig out. Making a mess of my storage bin. What are you doing? Bad Pip the fifth. I might need a separate room for just the eggs. <laughs> I'm reworking this ranch down here just a little bit so we can grow pinch of pepper plants on top and then the mealwood on the bottom. There was a, a good comment that was pointing out that the temperatures here don't really agree with each other. We got 10 to 30 down below and then 35 to 85 above. So I think I might leave these granite tiles right there and then use that to temperature control that just a little bit. So keep that a little bit warm, keep that a little bit cool. And I think it, I think it'll work out eventually. Sounds like a night, a fun challenge. I also gotta deliver the pips down here so that we can do more planting, but long list of things to do. So do I like where this is located? Honestly, if it could be a little bit to the left, I think that'd be all right. All right, so here my dupes go. They're going to try to build this and they got the little Plinko tiles to step around on. <laughs> so maybe I don't even need ladders to build this thing. Cool. All right, dupes, how are you doing? Oh, look, they've made some good progress here, sweeping most of that. And what are the temperatures like in there? Oh, okay. The less, it's less roasty. So maybe now we can actually decorate without cooking my dupes. You can see that, that we've been able to sweep all of this up. So that's really nice. And we just need to finish that last little tile right there. And then I'll, I'll have decorated the whole thing. You can see here I've reversed the loop direction, but you can see what I've done here. I've just gone through this. We skipped kind of over this middle area right there where the doors are and then come back over here. So hot side grabs that heat, dives away into the insulation so that we don't lose that heat. And then we boom, put it right on top of that um, vent right up there. So if this isn't running, then maybe it won't do a whole lot down here. But if it is running, this should be nice and efficient. There we go. Nice and clean. Looks cool. I like it. No, 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 puffed. You're on the wrong side. Thank you. All right, so the construction on this is finished and we've swept everything up. You can, see, you can see right here, the current germs are zero. It's just completely pretty much zero. I was able to get this little chunk of automation built right here so I can set the temperature inside of here. I decided to go for 150. Might be able to bring that a little bit lower depending on how, how things work out. And I moved a whole bunch of debris right down here. <laughs> so I'll try to clear that out. Maybe I'll sweep it up a little bit later. But what I want to do now is kind of do a little bit of a grooming station and some doors down there to turn that into a ranch. Let's see just how many, I don't know how many tiles that's going to be, but it looks like this might be a better arrangement because the stable is going to be about this big when it's all said and done. So we'll just go ahead and deconstruct that because I don't need it. But this will be a cool way. We can do a little bit of ranching for puffs and we'll then get a little bit of clean oxygen out of it. Which I might be able to hook up to a pump and then run that to Atmo suits. Now the thing is, I like, here's what I like the idea is, is if I have an Atmo suit, it's pretty much on every side of this and you just kind of run in an Atmo suit to one's dock to another dock and then you 
do what you need on the inside, and then you run it in the dock to the other dock. Not that you need to do that, but I don't know. In my brain, that sounds really cool. It's completely pointless though, because you can survive out there. Okay, how about that? 96 tiles and it lines up perfectly right there. <laughs> and then we got the little uh, little puffs right there, just running around. We can go down there, groom them up, make them real happy. And then they just like, I don't know, poop all over the place. Of course, now there's all this polluted oxygen. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. There's already polluted oxygen. Just as long as it runs through the deodorizer. Excuse me, run through the deodorizer, please. How long until this thing runs? Uh, another eight cycles. There we go, yep, we petted it. Cool. Hmm. <laughs> All right, dupes. What if we keep digging over this way? Ooh, it gets hot. There's something hot over here. Don't know what. What if we dig up to this? What is that? Okay, so far we've made a little bit of progress here. We got the steam turbine up and built. We've got a liquid reservoir, the thermal aqua tuner. I moved the generator down here so that I can actually build the first two modules. So what I'm thinking is each metal refinery will kind of have this area right here. Then there'll be a ladder in the middle. Then I'll have another one right there. Maybe not a ladder. Maybe I'll just walk over here, but I kind of stack one, two, three, four, five, and then maybe a sixth one or something else down here so that that can run up to this guy. We'll see. It's a lot of pipes to run in that area. I may have to flip this arrangement in order to get the pipes away from the middle so that I can actually route them as need be. I don't know if that'll work out, but then again. Okay, so now I'm going to try to tap into this natural gas geyser down here. It puts uh, outputs natural gas at 150, so that'll be it's a little hotter, but it isn't too bad. So I'm just going to use gold amalgam right here, and then next to that we'll just put the put the generator down in this area, kind of a temporary location, but that way I don't have to burn up my coal for power down here, even though this is a temporary operation. I would like to save my coal for refined coal, carbon rather than power. It's just kind of dirty power anyhow because they get a bunch of carbon dioxide running around. All right, good job, Meep. Way to run this machine. Just make it a little bit of refined copper, a little bit of refined aluminum. Eh, we don't really need any gold. but all that's just happening down there. All right, so to tap into this down here, uh, it isn't all that complicated. I just need to have a gas pump here, and then what I'm going to put in front of that is just a simple little gas filter. So I will bring the natural gas in, and we're going to take that natural gas, and we'll run it straight into a generator, which, where do I want to put that generator? Natural gas generator. I'll stick it right there for right now. So that gas will just be pumped right up there, like so, and then the rest of this we're just going to dump overboard right, not there, uh, right up here. Now I don't really have to worry about the temperatures down here too much. We're just surrounded by a lot of relatively cooler mass. Uh, so it doesn't, it's not like I'm going to have an overheat problem with this gas pump. All right, so I've got these Drecos down here, but they're still outside of the station. Let's see if we can box them in just a little bit without trapping them. Ooh, that was close. What do we got for the room overlay, hmm? <laughs> we are at 103. Ah! Okay, a few more tiles. And I think we'll have it. Oh no, there's, they're getting out. Crap, wrangle them again. All right, there we go. See, now it's a good looking room. And ranch, so we got these uh, bad pips down here. No seeds for you, sorry, bud. And we got a couple of Drecos down here. Let's go ahead and shear these up. I would like to expand the amount of Atmos suit docks I have. It's just taking a long time to get much of anything over here up and running. Come on now, a couple more wires. You can do it, dupes, please. All right, let's see if they can rip through this. Good luck, dupes. So one thing I'm doing here with these liquid loops it, that's a little bit different than I did last time is I'm checking the temperature here and then I'm going to try to reinsert it back into the loop just like that, rather than running it through a tank. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get away with it, but mm, that's what I'm trying. If I do need a tank, I'll probably just move all of this automation, just one tile to the right, throw a tank in there so that it's close by. But what I want to try to do is only put a, enough material into this so where it can only really run through that loop once, but I, I just don't think that's gonna work. I'm probably gonna need a tank no matter what I do. Oh, good, yes. Bunch more reed fiber. So can I build a couple of Atmos suits? That would be sweet. Oh, and a little rust. Nice. How's the temperatures in the base doing? Ooh, up here that's 28.9 and I think 34 down there. In the top right, 36 or so. So that's still remaining about the same. So it's cooler. 
in some spots. Definitely down here in the bottom right, we've gone down another four to a, about four or five degrees or so. It kind of depends on what biome you're looking at. Some of them are a little bit more exposed to heat, it looks like, and potentially there's been some hot materials brought in. But for the most part, the base is not, it's not getting hotter. All right, so I got the natural gas generator hooked up down here, so that should provide some power to this equipment, which will help me build this equipment, which will then help me build the rest of the equipment. So it's all coming together piece by piece. Okay, so here's what I want to do. You see how I have all of this automation here? This is all tightly packed in to kind of do what it wants to do. Um, what I want to do is move all of this to the right. So I've made a blueprint of it, so I'm just going to go ahead and use that. Boom, just like that. And then I'm going to deconstruct just all of this because I don't need it. And what I'm going to put right here is going to be a liquid tank. Now, I'm not going to have a lot of crude oil in this, but this liquid tank is important because it allow, it'll, it will allow this metal refinery to continue to run. Here's how it's going to do that. So the output of this liquid tank is going to go, uh, output of the metal refinery is going to go into the liquid tank. And then only if it's possible. Okay, hold up. I need to move this stuff. Okay, so let me explain to you the logic of what's going on here with this piping. Um, from a logic standpoint, because from a visual standpoint, it looks like absolute spaghetti. Okay, so running out of the oil refinery, I'm running into a tank. This allows me to have a buffer so that I can queue up some more crude oil to go through the radiator. So inside of this radiator, I'm checking to see if the temperature is, is cool enough to exit or not. And if it's not cool enough, then it's just going to keep running around and around and around because it's going to go through this shutoff valve. But once it's cool enough, it will go past the shutoff valve because that will be disabled and then therefore go back into the metal refinery. And then once we're exiting some crude oil out here, there should be some more in queue from the liquid tank that can enter the system right there. Because if this is blocked up, we're not going to be able to go from this side of the bridge to that side of the bridge. That has to be clear in order for that to happen. And yes, it does look like madness because it kind of is madness. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, if I move all of this down one tile, then I can take this pipe and just bring it over one spot, which means the next one could go right down next to it, which means I don't have to stagger the pipes. All because I've spaced things out one more tile. Okay, here we go. Deconstruct, cancel, 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 cancel. All right, one more tweak and then I think I'll have it. <laughs> I have so many Drecos around my base. All I do is I wrangle them up, I bring them down here, shear them, and then I'll just open up the door and kick them out. <laughs> then they go and eat and, and grow or have a baby or something and then I bring them back. It's actually working out. You know what else is kind of working out? This germ polluted vent thing. So the one down here isn't even running, nor am I even killing the germs in the hot side of things. But since this is so cold, we're just killing the germs as it comes out. It just chills the air enough to kill it. So there we have it. And inside of here, I have a little ranch too. So you can see that room. That is exactly 96 tiles and it lined up perfectly right over here. So these are some, well, these, these should be tame and happy. Why are they glum? They're just not being uh, cared for, I guess. And then over here, you look at all of this oxygen, 1.5 kilograms of oxygen. Now the temperature of this is still right around 60 degrees or so. There's just so much debris down here. So the same thing that was keeping the temperatures kind of stable up in here beforehand is I swept it up and just kind of moved it down here. That was more or less what's keeping it was keeping the germs the last time we were looking at it when it was hot and I was pumping a lot of energy into this. Right now, this thing is dormant, so there's just not a lot of heat. But then again, I'm not sure there ever is going to be a ton of heat coming out of this thing. We'll see, but it's got a lot to heat up to get it, everything here over 100 degrees Celsius. Then again, my base is now full of oxygen. Look at that. We're at two kilograms here, there, and everywhere. There's a lot of carbon dioxide though, kind of floating around. I've cranked up the amount of ethanol distillers I'm using, which means that there's actually a lot of carbon dioxide in there. So I'm outrunning the amount of carbon skimmers I have, which means I might want to tweak some more things here too. More pipe spaghetti <laughs> and more crazy powerness. Look at that. Oh man, look at all these pips. 
Oh, there, there's four of them in there. Yeah, we've stopped sweeping, apparently. Um... <laughs> there's so many pips. Bad Pip the Fifth is overrunning my base. There's, they're just, he's just everywhere. Hold up, hold up. We gotta... We gotta deal with this. The only way I know how. Murderize them! Actually, it's not the only way I know how. But it is... It's effective. <laughs> Alright, dupes. Build this. Right down there. I did all of this just to make this one pipe be able to go like that. So don't let me down, dupes. And then I can cancel these liquid pipes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And just go right like that. And you need another tile there, by the way. I don't even know what that one's going to. What's that one going? Oh, wait. There's an AND gate or something in there. I got it. AND gate. Where's that AND gate at? Yeah, it's like that. And then this runs on to a clock sensor to determine at what time of day that that thing's going to run. We're probably not going to see it in this episode here, so I did a whole video tutorial on this one. You can check it out up here in the top right. Really useful because you can automate your inventory so that you don't have to, you know, you can just set, I want to have two kilograms of X metal refined and it will build that and then it will disable the piece of equipment. So really handy. All you end up doing is setting, setting the materials right here. But until I get all of the water I need up here and get things up and running, it's probably not going to happen. Definitely not going to happen today. Just don't have the time for it. Looks like my dupes have done a good job at sweeping up a lot of stuff. Oops, don't sweep that up. <laughs> there's a lot less debris around in some spots. In other spots, there's, eh, there's still some. But, you know, like the bedrooms, eh, they're starting to clean up a little bit. It's not bad, and I think we might see this thing start to run here in the next two cycles, so I'll, I'll wait to see what happens there. Okay, so this is as far as I was able to get on the metal refining project today, but I think I have a decent method that I'm, I'll be working with here, and I can repeat it, which is, which is real key. So I can take this, I can copy it down a couple times, and stagger out the, the loops as well, so I think that'll actually work out pretty good. Got the foundation built up here to kind of cool my own steam turbine so that should work out pretty good but what i really need to get this thing up and running is oil so i've got a little bit of oil up there and that's good for a little bit but i've also located another spot over here where there's a little bit of crude oil and this oil reservoir is available as well so that's that's pretty key and luckily i do have some extra water that i might be able to use i have some right here it's actually backed up <laughs> and I don't have anywhere to go with all the extra water that I'm, that's coming out of my base right now. As a matter of fact, it might even be a problem at some point here. So, I'll have to make use of that. So I could potentially take that, put it over here, turn it into crude oil, and be on my way. Now, let's take a look at what's going on over here. We have both of these vents now. They've, this one down here has just started to run. So if we take a look at the temperatures, um, I did switch the direction of flow on the conveyor based on your guys' comments down there. Personally, I think the thermal mass of what's going on here is, is is may not make a big difference, but we, I, mean, I could see it. Let's see. So it's heading out of here at 115. By the time it gets down here, it's at 109. What are we leaving at? 110. Uh, gas just doesn't have a ton of thermal energy. So by the time we get up here, it's now at a 103, which means the environment back here, what's that temperature like? Well... It's still 75 degrees. I think that has something to do with the wallpaper I've put down. I think it has a little bit of thermal capacity. We're up to 120 degrees over here. So what are the germs looking like? Well, they're definitely dead down here. They're still alive up there because things are not quite hot enough just yet. So let's crank up the priority on this. See if we can get some dupes in here to run on this just a little bit. The temperature of the gas, uh, of the oxygen that's flowing out, that still hit and goes really cold so that's where we're killing the germs right now on the cold side honestly i guess it doesn't really matter because it's just running through and it's killing the germs no matter what so the super polluted oxygen vent is running and it's making tons of oxygen i don't really think a lot of this is necessary i wouldn't take this as a tutorial on how to do either of these um for the most part, you just want to cool it down and bam, you kill the germs. It's really quite easy. But I think as a method to combine both of these and try to boost the efficiency a little bit, I think it's an interesting project. Yeah, so I've let this thing run here for several cycles now. And yeah, it is getting closer and closer to 100 degrees Celsius. But man, it's going to take many, many cycles. So I'm not going to burn that many cycles just waiting for it to heat up. 
in, in the end, we're still getting out, you know, journalist polluted oxygen. We're getting it out at uh, huge quantities. At this point, I just have too much oxygen. So the system's working and I'm ranching some puffs. So that's pretty cool. So I would I would call that a success. I wouldn't say this is a how to, though, on these on these vents. It was just kind of a, a fun project idea. And I think it's worked out. It hasn't really worked out exactly as we would expect it. But I think it's. It's, it was fun, but I'm not going to spend much more time on it now because I got bigger and better projects such as building up this automated metal refinery and tapping into more sources of crude oil and whatnot. So that will have to happen here in the next episode. Thanks to everybody that's been subscribing lately. The support's been absolutely awesome. If this looks like the channel for you, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.